Welcome back to the lab. Today we're doing something a little bit different. MacBook logic boards can get a bit boring under the microscope, but I used to fix a lot of TVs and stereos back in the 90s. Let's go back to the past. Let's fix an AV stereo receiver. And even better, I have the schematics for this one. This is the long version of the vlog. But if you want to know how to reset your Yamaha AV receiver that is not powering up, we have a shorter version of this video and that's in the description down below. Otherwise, let's get started. We're taking the top off, it looks a bit dusty. And if we have a look inside, we can see it's caked up with dust and dirt. So we're gonna to have to blow that out with a uh, air compressor. Now that we've blown all that dust out, um, we have our audio video receiver here and this uses an old type power supply it uses a big thumping transformer here and that converts the 230 volts on this side down to uh, you know maybe 5 volts AC another 12 volt AC rail uh, maybe even a, a 30 volt AC rail just to drive the uh, the main power amplifier stage for the speakers we have a secondary board here which is a little power supply board. And we have a little uh, bloated capacitor here. And we're gonna take a closer look at that. And we also have our logic here to switch all the HDMI circuitry. So let's have a quick look at this, uh, this pregnant capacitor and see if it's worth uh, pulling out. These are our capacitors on the board. If we have a look at this one, this one is slightly bloated, it's slightly pregnant. And what happens is when these malfunction inside, they build up pressure. And you can see the little three cuts here. And that's just to allow it to bow out a little bit when it uh, overpressurizes um, and not to explode everywhere and just drop its guts all over the inside of the actual, uh, the receiver itself. So basically, um, we'll have to rip this capacitor out. As you can see, it's got that slight dome there. But if you compare it to all the others, these are flat. So these capacitors are all fine. And just a secondary note, this capacitor just filters the DC and makes it all smooth. So uh, let's start ripping out that uh, faulty capacitor. We're just ripping out the HDMI uh, logic board so we can get access to the power supply properly and these are a bugger to break these plugs. Put a little flat screwdriver in and give it a twist. That's it, broken. We've got to disconnect the ribbon cables in this area here so I can flop the board over. We've had to take out a, a million screws through here, which really sucks, uh, just to get this back panel off. And this gives us better access to the power supply board in here. So we'll uh, have a closer look at that and uh, desolder that faulty capacitor. We'll just add a little bit of flux. And remove the solder. And he's out. This is the old capacitor here. It's 10,000 microfarad. And a farad is a unit of charge. And then basically what we're going to do is, because these are pretty hard to get locally, 
we're just going to replace it with two of these which adds up to just under 10,000 microfarad uh, because the 4747 add up together so it'll, uh, it'll do the job we'll just solder that in place lovely we're going to put that second capacitor on the underside of the board because you can only fit one on top and we'll just solder the last leg in now lovely all tickety boo while having a look around this power supply board I spotted a pretty dodgy joint here and you can see this one here is fairly well clean but this is a bit of a blob um, this is straight out of the factory come on Yamaha you can do better than that so what we'll do is we might just desolder this joint here and this joint here there's a filter capacitor on the other side and we'll just make sure that capacitor is a-okay let's clean him up a little bit get rid of all that crap I've decided to replace that other capacitor as well just to be safe And that's a lot better than the last joint that was there. These are two brand new capacitors. Uh, the old one here, as you remember, was um, bloated at the top, so it was stuffed. And this one had a bit of a crappy joint underneath, but um, I measured it and it was, um, yeah, way out of tolerance. So we replaced that capacitor there as well. So let's put um, everything back together and power up and see what happens. We're hitting the power button and nothing is happening so we've got another fault we have to investigate. Our next step is to uh, check this little power supply board down here and this little transformer here is a standby transformer and it just creates that 9 or 10 volts AC uh, and rectifies it by the diodes down here and then sends it um, up to the secondary power supply board where it, get fil where it gets filtered and goes for a little uh, 3 volt regulator. So we have four wires here. So one of them is the ground wire. Uh, the next one is what we call AC detect and that goes off to uh, a little microprocessor so um, it actually uh, tells a little microprocessor that AC is present or your power lead is plugged in. Um, and then there's a little, uh, that 10 volts, 9 or 10 volts, um, which is from the little transformer, which goes over to the power supply board. But the most important one is the power relay line. And what happens is um, when all those voltages go over to the main microprocessor, and that microprocessor, the board management processor, or system management processor looks after all the voltages and parameters all over the stereo to make sure it's all fine and it also uh, looks after thermal management to make sure heat sinks, heat sinks aren't uh, overheating and such forth and it sends back a special signal via a line called power relay or PRY and if the processor is happy with all those parameters on startup it'll kick that relay in and it will activate the main power transformer and then the whole system powers up. So what we'll do is we'll just have a look at a couple of those signals coming off this board here uh, and we'll uh, see how we go. The other end of that cable arrives here onto our little power supply board and obviously we've got our ground going in and then we've got our, our, our 9 or 10 volt rail and that goes through our little regulator here and this regulator spits out roughly 3.3 volts and that's to run uh, the little microprocessor uh, on the main board which controls all those parameters and, and initializes startup. So we've just checked our voltage here and it comes up with 3.3 uh, which is correct. 
have to do is we've got to check our power relay signal coming into this board as well and that's currently zero volts so the microprocessor is telling this stereo not to start for some reason so we'll have a quick look at our microprocessor this is our main microprocessor which uh, looks after all voltages and thermal management of the uh, stereo receiver and this is the first thing that uh, activates when you hit the power button and then it drives the main big fat relay to engage or turn on that big power transformer to start everything else up and the main line that we're concerned about is pin 84 which is probably around about here somewhere we need a positive voltage on that to pull in that relay to power up everything now we have nothing on pin 84 um, We've got all our appropriate voltages going to this microprocessor so we've got that 3.3 volts in the ground and if we actually check the crystal of the microprocessor this is the one that clocks it it's a, the heartbeat of the microprocessor there's nothing coming off this crystal either and all the inputs are normal coming into this processor so it should be starting up but it's not so it's one of two things it's either completely dead or cactus or and this is uh, this is a lesson for newbies it's bricked itself and what actually happens is if that microprocessor detects a couple of faults in a row or three strikes it will actually lock itself up and shut itself down and uh, what we have to do is we have to go into a diagnostics mode on the front of the actual stereo itself and reinitialize that uh, processor and uh, actually see the fault it was throwing up and then we'll uh, yeah just uh, go from there and see what happens this is the Yamaha AV receiver RX V371 and we're about to throw it into diagnostics mode uh, but don't fear because this process will also work with the V300 series the V400 series and the V500 series so you could have a V375 or a, a V481 or a V585. It's pretty much all the same. All you have to do is hold in the tone control and straight buttons at the same time. And then you hit the power button. But you must continue holding tone control and straight for another three seconds after you hit the power button it's going into diagnostics mode now and there's no protect so there's no uh, fault that it's detected because it was cleared earlier but if you want to have a look at a history of any faults that have occurred you can just use this little key here on the left side and just go to 21 and that will tell you any current faults are in the system but you can just have a bit of a look through the history um, and if nothing turns up uh, your fault is pretty well clear please take note that we're going to turn this off and that will clear any of the faults and uh, unbrick that little processor it should work normally but if it's created a fault or tripped it um, it's done it for a reason and that's because uh, there's a fault inside the actual receiver itself so um, yeah always go down to your uh, Yamaha dealer they may be able to fix it or take it to a, a qualified electronics technician and they may be able to uh, fix the fault inside it could be a, a bloated capacitor it could be dust um, it could be anything but if you reset the system after a fault the fault will just reoccur over and over and over again and you'll end up doing more damage to the stereo receiver as always if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you like the content subscribe or share also let us know how you went in the comments down below other than that we'll see you next time in the lab